And that demonstrates um, why you need a weak acid and its conjugate and not a strong acid and its conjugate. So when I first asked you at the beginning of today's session how to make a buffer, um, your first recollection was that you thought we needed a strong acid. And now we can see why that won't work. If we put in a strong acid and its conjugate, well, this won't work as, as a sponge at all because it's really uh, not basic at all. Uh, chlorides ten generally tend not to protonate at all. So this is not going to add up. This won't work to, um, to, to soak up any hydroniums that are getting added. This is not going to work as a sponge because the conjugate of something strong is really not basic at all, even though it's technically called the conjugate base. Okay. All right, so I hope that made some sense. Uh, but um, in many cases, you can just have memorized that you make a buffer out of a weak acid and its conjugate. Because remember, the conjugate of a weak acid is also weak. We saw that why that was, because a weak acid is something whose reaction goes to equilibrium. Well, if this reaction is going to equilibrium, that means that uh, in equilibrium, we're going to have some of both of these. Uh, that means this doesn't completely deprotonate, and this doesn't completely protonate. And we'll have some of both. OK. Okay, so uh, now we've seen uh, how do we make a buffer out of a weak acid and its conjugate, or a weak base and its conjugate. We could call them the conjugate or the conjugate salt, whichever is convenient, depending on whether you put the spectator in. And we've also seen how the buffer works. We've seen how if you just added acid or base to water, acid would produce hydronium and lower the pH, or base would produce hydroxide and increase the pH. But if you add acid or base to a buffer, um, they, uh, one of the parts of the buffer is going to soak up the acid in the base that you added, and it looks like there's not going to be any change in the hydronium. In reality, there would be some changes, but uh, small changes. So the pH is only going to change by a little bit uh, in the buffer. Okay, okay. Um, so now we've seen qualitatively how a buffer works. We've seen qualitatively how a buffer works to prevent changes in pH. And the next thing we'd like to try to do, uh, if you're ready, is now we want to be quantitative and actually predict what the pH would be in a buffer solution. And for that, that's what we're supposed to use the henderson hasselbalch equation for. Um, so do you have any questions before we get to that? Does this make sense so far? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So now let's see how we can use the henderson hasselbalch equation to predict what the pH would actually be.